flawless kettlebell technique. You gotta let me help you with that technique if you're gonna do kettlebells, you have to. I don't want you going to the hospital. KB's for double C's. Guys, if you don't have this, you're not living. <laughs> and if you don't have that, you've gotta have PNF Max or SFE for trumpet, strength, flexibility, endurance for trumpet. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail. I got up this morning procrastinating about having to go out and um, shovel snow. 250 swings and half an hour shoveling snow. Don't need no stinking warm-up. So anyway, there was this documentary about Herseth that just brought flooding back all these emotions and memories. And I haven't done anything on Herseth in a while, and I think I should. So anyway, let me honk a little bit. Let's see what we got in the tank, and uh, we'll take it from there. See trumpet, see what we got. flats, triple E flats. A couple ditties from the great Strauss composition, Don Juan. Oh, God, beautiful stuff. Anyway, I was studying with Mel at the time. This is back in college, okay? And, but her Seth was the rage. Her Seth and the Chicago Symphony were like rock stars. I mean, within the orchestral community, they were kings, absolute kings. And Herseth was leading the way. Now, Mel sitting down in the pit, his brilliance went largely unnoticed for anybody other than some people that just listened to him like I did. But Herseth was just the absolute freaking rage. Okay? I mean, I remember in college, on a Sunday afternoon, where everybody else gets their chicken wings and beer and um, watches a football game. Now, we went to somebody's, we revolved their apartments, Okay, we got our chicken wings and beer and listen to the Sunday afternoon live broadcast from uh, Symphony Hall in Chicago and listen to her set. We didn't care what they were playing. And that's another thing, guys, as you'll hear in this docu. Her set was their fearless leader. There's no question about it, but it was not just him. That was an extraordinary orchestra, top to bottom, with great, great conductors that were perfect for what they wanted. And it was not just the trumpets. I mean, we're talking Vincent Chickowitz. Uh, Frank Catarabic was assistant for a while. Phil Smith played third, it's played fourth. Phil Smith played fourth? I mean, are you kidding me? Arnold Jacobs, we can go right down the list. Scary, scary brass section, okay? Uh, and actually, uh, they talked with Barbara Butler, who was subbing at the time. And she said, what happened when Herseth came in as a little whippersnapper from New England Conservatory, straight out of one of the lead, lead trumpet in one of the army bands? His power was just off the charts. So what the other trumpets did to try to keep up with it, they raised their power. And the breast of the brass section followed. And if the wind section wanted to be heard at all, they had to get stronger. Same with the strings. And what happened when everybody else was stronger? Herseth played stronger. He wanted to lead the charge from on top. She, she talked about being on top. Guys, it was an incredible, incredible top to bottom. And in all due respect, I say this all the time, and I am not knocking guys like Chris Martin and Bilger and all that sort of stuff. They're my whipping boys. But guys, nothing is close. 
And you young guys, I have a lot of the young uh, players. And I am not battalion. I'm not knocking those guys. They're excellent, but it's a different thing altogether. And within this documentary, they talk a lot about him and they interview him and all this sort of stuff, but they play clips from that orchestra. And it's sublime. Absolutely sublime. And I told you, I heard them live. They took the rock star on the road. And they came to Carnegie Hall, and uh, I heard them play. And they played Don Juan. Now, at the time, the best tickets we could get were, again, we're all starving music students. And we were all in the back row at Carnegie Hall. And it wasn't just us, it was all the guys from Juilliard and all the guys from Manhattan and all this sort of stuff. And we knew who they were. We had sort of a friendly, well, it wasn't so friendly, but a competition between two. And, you know, Juilliard, they were all the, the, the stuffy, snotty guys. Um, Manhattan at the time was the only one of the big three that had a jazz program. So Fattis was there and I, for about five minutes. So they, they were all the jazzers. And we were sort of a combination of the two. Um, but they all knew us, we all knew them, and all of us are in the back row. And all of a sudden, Herseth just brought us together. And that amazing symphony, guys, it's like the New York Philharmonic, Philharmonic meets DCI, drum corps. I mean, I've never heard anything. And actually, there is a, um, a clip from a, a student at Temple at the time who absolutely echoes exactly what I was saying, what I'm about to say. He was saying, at Temple, they were all studying with people from the Philadelphia Orchestra, which we were all studying with people from the Philharmonic. So he had you know, access to all these rehearsals and everything of the great Philadelphia Orchestra under Eugene Normandy. So sure enough, he was very well versed in their sound and all this sort of stuff. And when uh, Chicago came to town with Schulte, he said he went to listen to a concert. He said he thought they were kidding because they were playing so loud. He actually found himself breaking out laughing because it was just so incredibly different from what he was used to, to listening to. And he says, it took a while to adjust to it, but after, I, he says, after a while, I was just under their spell. I mean, they just, they could play in a whisper like anybody else, but their loud was just so far on the other end. And Barbara, Barbara Butler talked about that too. It's very, very interesting. But once again, I heard him at Carnegie Hall playing Don Juan, and again, just like I, that guy from Temple is going to put it so beautiful, we had never heard anything like that. I mean, the New York Philharmonic is one thing, and Phil Smith was there, but we had never heard anything like that before. It was just an incredible mountain of sound to the point, guys, where, where the, the sound was almost palpable, is that right? Could you, can you feel sound? You can, I mean, there are sound waves spewing forth, and I swear I, I could feel it in my chest, and those octave calls, oh my God, I swear, he winked at me and said, check this out, Ralph, and just let it rip, and if I have holes in my forehead, that's because of it. And it's like he said, yeah, bring that back to Mel Bros. Tell me what we're talking. I mean, obviously that didn't happen. But it was just unbelievable. And we came, after the you know, two encores, we couldn't get enough. The entire, the entire um, audience. You know, we're walking down the stairs, we're coming down the, the elevators and all that stuff. And everybody is just yelling and screaming and singing the licks and all this sort of stuff. And a bunch of us that were at Manus, got on the Crosstown bus, you know, late at night, and everybody must have thought we were a street gang or something, because we are stoned or something, because we were just singing, oh, did you hear this, did you hear this, and we're letting it rip and laugh. Oh, it was, an ex it, it was like a rock concert. You can hear me getting excited even to this day. But this, again, I'm gonna shut up. It's about 45 minutes, but, Get your chicken wings and your beer. <laughs> Get your baked potato fries and some uh, Brussels sprouts. And uh, check this out. It's worth it. It is very, very interesting, very, very informative. And the great Herseth. And an all deference to everybody that's going on today. Nothing like this.
nothing like this. All hail herself. Love you all, guys. Enjoy the clip.